Welcome to God Maths. In today's lesson, we'll discuss the application of linear programming in business and economics. Linear programming is a mathematical tool that is used by economists and business analysts to maximize profit and to minimize costs, subject to some constraints. This method of maximizing profits and minimizing costs is called optimization. Now we are going to look at the linear programming model, which is subject to some assumptions. Let's look at the assumptions of the linear programming model. The linear programming model is always based on some activities of the firm. These activities are called decision variables in the linear programming model. And the decision variables can include machine usage, labor hours, and so on. Now let's look at the assumptions of this model. The first assumption of the linear programming model is linearity which simply means that the decision variables used in the model must have a linear relationship with each other so that when they are graphed, they will form a straight line. The second assumption is certainty. And this simply means that the decision variables that are used in the model must always be certain. Then the next is divisibility. This assumption tells us that the decision variables in our linear programming model can take up fractional or decimal values. And the last assumption we are going to look at is non-negativity. And the non-negativity assumption means that the values that the decision variables can take start from 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. Next, we are going to look at the components of the linear programming model. The linear programming model has three main components. These are the objective function and this is a function of the item to be optimized. This may be a profit to be maximized or a cost to be minimized. Generally, if there are x1, x2, x3, up to xn decision variables, then the objective function z will be equal to where C1, C2, C3, up to Cn are the coefficients of the decision variables X1, X2, X3, up to Xn. Now the next component of the linear programming model is the resource constraints. And generally, if there are m constraints to the resources of the firm, then where BM is the resource constraint. And this simply means that all the resources put together are less than or equal to the constraint. It cannot be greater than the constraint of the resources. Then 
The third component is the non negative constraint. And this simply means that the decision variables are always greater than or equal to zero. So all the decision variables in the linear programming model are greater than or equal to zero. And this is a non-negative constraint. Next, we will take a practical example and use the graphical method to solve it. In this example, we are going to maximize the objective function t is equal to 4x plus 5y subject to the given constraint. The first two are the resource constraints and the next two are the non-negative constraints. Let's check the solution to this. Now the first thing to do here is to change all the inequalities in the constraints to equations. And so we would have 2x plus 5y is equal to 25 as our first equation. 6x plus 5y is equal to 45. Our second equation, x is equal to 0 is our third equation. y is equal to 0 is our fourth equation. Now all these four equations are linear equations and so will give us a straight line when plotted on a graph. Now the first and second equations have two variables. So we need two points to draw this graph. So for equation one, to get these points, we will put in the values x is equal to zero and y is equal to zero. And this will give us, when x is equal to zero, we will have two times zero, five y, and that will give us y is equal to 5. So here we have the point 0, 5, which is our x and y. Then when y is equal to 0, that will give us 2x plus 5 times 0 is equal to 25. Then x will be equal to 25 over 2, which will give us 12.5. Then we have another point, 12.5. 0. Note that the x value must always come first when writing the point. So for equation 1, we are going to have these two points. We will have 0, 5 and then 12.5, 0. Let's go to equation 2. So for equation 2, when x is equal to 0, we will have 6 times 0, 5y, and that will give us y is equal to 9. So we have our first point, 0, 9. Then when y is equal to 0, we will have 6x plus 5, 0 is equal to 45. This will give us x is equal to 45 over 6 which is 7.5. So we have another point, 7.5, 0, x value before y value. And so for equation 2, we have these two points, 0, 9, and then 7.5, 0. Now we are going to use these points, we are going to use these points to draw for the line for equation 1, this is the line for equation 2, the line for equation 3, and the line for equation 4. So let's check out our graph. So we are using the following scale because with our points, the highest value for x is 12.5 and the high, highest value for y is 9. So we use a scale of 2 cm to 2 units on the x axis and 2 cm to 1 unit on the y axis. Now let's plot our points. For equation 1, we have the point 0, 5, and then 12.50. So 0, 5, 
0 on the x axis, 5 on the y axis. And then 12.5, we have 13 between 12 and 14, so 12.5 will be here and 0. So equation 1 is going to give us this straight line. But we realize that in the constraints, equation 1 is less than or equal to 25, which means the values can also be less than this. And so equation 1 values can also be the values in this region. Then for equation 2, we have 0, 9, and then 7.5, 0. So plotting that, 0, 9 will give us this. Then 7.5, this is 7, so 7.5 is here. 7.5 and 0 will also give us this point. Then that will give us our straight line for equation 2. Equation 2 values are also less than or equal to 45. And so the values move down this way. Then for equation 3, we have x is equal to 0, where the values are greater than or equal to 0. x is equal to 0 is found here, so it will give us this line. And the values are greater than, so they move to the right. Then y is also greater than or equal to 0. That will be on this line. So we have the y values here and they move upwards because the values are greater than or equal to zero. Now, if we want to shade this graph for equation one, because the values fall this way, we are going to have this shade. Then for equation two, we will have this since the values are falling. For equation 3, the x values move to the right, so we are going to have them this way. And then the last one, y values move upwards, so we will have them this way. Looking at this graph critically, you'd realize that there is a point where all our shades intersect. And that region is called feasible region. The feasible region is bounded by these lines. In this region, all the shadings we have done intersect. So this region is called feasible region. Then if you want to find the maximum value of this function, or if you want to maximize the function, we will put the corner points of our feasible region. These are the corner points. The corner points of our feasible region into the function, then the highest value is our maximum profit. Let's look at the corner point. This point is 0, 5. This point is 0, 0. This point is 7.5, 0. And then the point here will give us uh, Five and then three. Now on a standard graph, you will have these points. You can also have the point by solving the equation simultaneously. On this line, we should indicate that it is the equation one, which is two x plus five y less than or equal to twenty five. This line is six x plus five y less than or equal to 45. Now let's find our maximum profits where we will use the corner points. So we will write the corner points here 
then we will look at the profit which is t is equal to 4x plus 5y so let's get our corner points we have 0 5 we have 0 0 we have 7.50 and then 5 3 then the profit for this point is going to be t equal to 4 0 5 5 x is 0 y is 5 and that will give us 25 here we will have t is equal to 4 0 5 0 which will give us 0 t is equal to 4 7.5 then 5 0 which will give us 30 then t is equal to 4 5 then 5 3 which will give us 35 so looking at all the profit we have from the corner points of our feasible region we realize that the highest profit is this and so we will conclude that the maximum profit profit is 35 we will take our next example where we will have a word problem to draw these constraints and the objective function from. Let's check out our second example. In this example, we have a word problem from which we must derive our linear programming model and then solve using the graphical method. Let's go through our word problem. A farmer has 100 acres on which to plant two crops, corn and wheat. The problem is to maximize profit. There are several considerations. The first is the expense. The expense on seed, fertilizer, and planting. So the total expenditure on corn for one acre is 120 cities. And the total expenditure for wheat per acre is also 210 cities. Then after the harvest, the farmer must store the crops while awaiting good market conditions. Each acre yields an average of 110 bushels of corn and 30 bushels of wheat. Then the limitations to resources are the available capital is 15,000 15, Ghana cities and the available storage facilities is 4,000 bushels. Now, if the net profit per bushel of corn is 1 city 30 pesos and that of wheat is 2 Ghana cities, how should a farmer plant the acres to maximize profit? So in this problem, the main thing we are going to do is to look at how the farmer should plant the 100 acres to maximize profit. And we know from the question that the farmer is going to plant two crops, corn and wheat. So part of the 100 acres will be used for corn part of the 100 acres will be used for wheat. Let's let x be the number of acres of corn and y be the number of acres of wheat. Then let's go through the problem again. Our first constraint is the acres of land that we have. We have 100 acres and we are supposed to use x acres of corn and then y acres of wheat. And so, x plus y will either be less than or equal to 100. This is because the maximum number of acres we will have is 100. So this becomes our first inequality then next we will also look at our available capital from which we must make these expenses we are going to make an expenditure of 120 Ghana cities per acre of corn and so for the corn we are going to have 120 x expenses we spend 120 per acre, and so for x acres, we will have 120x. 
We spend 210 CDs per acre for wheat. And so for Y acres, we are going to have 210 Y. And that is subject to our available capital, which is constrained at 15,000 Ghana CDs. Then let's also look at our available storage facilities and the available yield. Now from the question, each acre will yield 110 bushels of corn. And so for X acres of corn, we are going to have 110 X bushels. And then for Y acres of corn, where we know that each acre of wheat is 30 bushels. So each acre produces an average of 30 bushels of wheat. And then we have Y acres of wheat. And so we are going to have 30 Y. And that is constrained to our available resource, our available storage facilities, which is at 4,000 bushels. And then how much profits can we get from this? Our maximum yield of Corn is 110x. Our maximum yield of wheat is 30y. Now, the net profit per bushel of corn is 1 CD, 30 pesos. And so the profit from corn is going to be our yield of corn, which is 110x, times the profit we will get per bushel of corn. And then our profit per bushel of wheat is 2 Ghana cities and since we have 30y yield of wheat we will have 30y times 2 Ghana cities and this one is going to give us our profit and so the profit function is going to be 143x plus 60y and the basic thing we are going to do with our linear programming is to maximize this profit function P equal to 143x plus 60y and that is subject to the following constraints we have x plus y less than or equal to 100 we have 120x plus 210y less than or equal to 15,000. We also have 110x plus 30y less than or equal to 4,000. And then we must not forget our non-negativity constraints, which are x is greater than or equal to 0 y is greater than or equal to zero. These two constraints are part of the assumptions of the linear programming model. So next, we are going to learn, or we are going to look at how we will use the graphical method to find, to maximize this profit subject to the following constraints. Now, let's maximize the profit function P equal to 143x plus 60y subject to the given constraints like we had from the problem and we have done this in example one where we will change all the inequalities in the constraint to equations and that will give us x plus y equal to 100 as our first equation 120x plus 210y is equal to 15,000 as our second equation then 110x plus 30y is equal to 4000 that is equation 3 x is equal to 0 and then y is also equal to 0 like we did in example 1 we would have to put the values x is equal to 0 y is equal to 0 into the two the three equations so that it will give us the point that will lead to a straight line on a graph so let's have for equation one 
when x is equal to 0, we will have y is equal to 100. That is when we put 0 here. So our point will be 0, 100. Then when y is equal to 0, we will have x is equal to 100. That is when we put 0 here, we will have x is equal to 100. And that point will be 0, 100, 0. X value first before the Y value. Then for equation 2, we will have when X is equal to 0, Y will be equal to 71.4. You can put the value of x here and do the calculation. So that will give us the point 0, 071.4. When y is equal to 0, that also means that we are going to put the value of y here. And we will have x is equal to 125. So our point will be 1250. Then for equation 2. We are going to have 2.071.4, then 1250. For equation 1, we also have 2 points, 0, 100, and then 100, 0. Let's go to equation 3. For equation 3, when x is equal to 0, that is, when we put the value of x here, we will have y to be 133.3. So our point will be 0, 133.3. Then, when y is also equal to 0, that is when we put the value of y here as 0. Then we are going to have x is equal to 36.4. And that point will be... 36.40. So for equation 3, we will have these two points 0, 133.3, and then 36.40. Now we are going to plot these points on the graph in addition to the constraint points which are x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 0. So let's check what we will have on the graph. So these are the straight lines for the constraints. x plus y equal to 100, 120x plus 210y less than or equal to 1500, and the third constraint. The constraint for non-negativity, x is greater than or equal to 0, will fall on the vertical line. And then y is greater than or equal to 0 will fall on the horizontal line as we had in our previous example. So we will shade the regions where for this linear equation because the values are less than or equal to will fall this way. Then the next one, which is this, the values are still less than or equal to, so also fall this way. Then the other inequality will also fall this way because the values are less than or equal to. And then the non-negative constraints will cut across. Now you would realize that there is a region where all our shadings meet. And that region is called the feasible region. And that region is bounded by the following corner point. The feasible region is bounded by these four corner points. And the points are 0, 0. This is 0, 
and then we have that 71.4 this is also 36.40 and the last one here is approximately 2060 now to find the maximum profit we must put in the points that are at the corner of our feasible region into our profit function and so let's do that we have our points here then we have the profit function p equal to 143s plus 60y so let's take the points one after the other for the point zero zero we will have p 1430 zero, and that will give us zero for the point 36.40 that also means that we put the values there 143 36.4 plus 60 and zero so we find this one on the calculator and we have approximately 5200 let's take our next point which is 2060 where we put our profit as 143 the x value is 20 plus 60 the y value is 60 and that also give us 6460 you do that with the calculator the last point is 0, 0, 71.4 and our profit will be 143 times 0 plus 60, 71.4. You do that with a calculator and we have approximately 4,286. 4,286. So let's find our maximum profit from this. From this, we will see that our maximum profit is 6,460 and the values that gives us that maximum profit is this. Remember that the x value is the number of acres for corn and the y value is the number of acres for wheat. And so, we will say that 20 acres of corn and 60 acres of wheat give us the maximum profit. But remember that the farmer had a total of 100 acres of land. And so we will conclude that the farmer must plant 20 acres of corn then 60 acres of wheat and leave 20 acres unplanted so this is just because there is a total of 100 acres so if there is 20 for corn and 20 for wheat then there will be 20 acres left unplanted now Try these two examples on your own and then in our next lesson, we are going to take three more examples. Before you sign out, remember to like, comment, subscribe and share this video with your friends.